Uh, we awake this morning to uh, a massive interview with Philip Schofield in The Sun, an exclusive by Clemmy Moody. Uh, we hope to speak to Clemmy later on in the show. Uh, we will be speaking to Kevin O'Sullivan, of course, and we will be talking to other people around the entire issue of the responsibility that ITV has, because I think nobody can watch this, no matter what your view of Philip Schofield is, no matter what you think he has done, no matter what you think he should be punished for, you, nobody can look at that interview and think that this is a good situation for anybody. And what I'm going to be asking this morning is how on earth ITV have been able to let this situation spiral out of control to such an extent where you have the potential of a massive uh, television network crashing to the ground due to mismanagement, due to bad leadership and due to incredibly difficult and ridiculously made decisions, right? That's where we are with ITV. People have said to me all week, why are we covering this? Why is it such a big deal? Well, it's such a big deal because this is one of Britain's top companies literally being driven over a cliff by Carolyn McCall, who doesn't seem to know what she's doing and who seems to think it's perfectly good for her to continue to take £3.5 million. Meanwhile, you've got Philip Schofield, who's clearly a very damaged individual, uh, a man now saying, do you want me to die? into a camera. Now, I don't have very much sympathy for Philip Schofield. He got to where he is by putting himself there. But nevertheless, we are humans after all. And you don't want to see anybody really, really suffering. But an awful lot of people have suffered. And I blame ITV for allowing it to happen. Let's face it, they've got form because they haven't looked after people that have worked for them in the past. They haven't looked after people uh, who have appeared as presenters and indeed as guests on different shows. We know all of the stories from all of the, uh, the history of ITV and I think enough is enough. Piers Morgan this morning uh, has basically tweeted that unless and until the other individual in this um, um, couple situation with Philip Schofield, unless he comes out and criticises and uh, contradicts what Philip Schofield has said, surely... Um, this should be the end of it, shouldn't it? But I don't know. We'll hear from you on this as well. 0344 499 1000. Richard Tice joins me this morning. I'll get his view on it. We'll also talk about uh, the bizarre nature of the government suing itself over the WhatsApp messages uh, that Boris has or has not supplied. We'll also be talking about what on earth happened in Bournemouth. There's still an awful lot of questions about that. And also, uh, there's some migrant stories to do as well. 0344 499 1000. This is the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Let us get it on. Good morning, and um, I suppose a happy Friday to most people watching this programme this morning on Talk TV. Richard Tice is here. Richard, nice to see you. Uh, it's good to see you, Mike. I think it's a confused morning, yeah. actually, and it's a bit of a confused week. I'd rather mm. like... The weather out yes. there, it's 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 June, but it's freezing cold. It is freezing cold. I came out this morning thinking, what on earth has happened to the global warming? <laughs> no, we're now into global cooling, right. as far as I can see. Right. It's the middle of summer, and it's freezing cold, and the events of the nation are, are chilly mm. at best. Absolutely. I mean, there's just wherever you look, there's extraordinary things mm. going on. The idea of a government that's suing itself yes. is deeply confusing right. and cannot be a good use of taxpayers' cash. Where do we want to begin with all of this stuff? Well, I mean, I suppose we ought to begin with The Sun's incredible headline this morning with Philip Schofield on the front of the paper saying, I'm broken and ashamed, but not a groomer. I mean, as I said just now at the start of the show, you, you know, you, you don't feel a great deal of sympathy for Philip Schofield on the basis that, you know, he put himself where he is. He created the situation. Uh, he has admitted himself that he lied to absolutely everybody, uh, including his own wife, including his, uh, his on-screen partner, Holly Willoughby, including his own lawyer, you know, and he's now uh, appearing to to sort of paint himself as a victim. And, but at the same time as saying that, you can kind of understand why this is an, un, an unpleasant situation yeah, for everybody. I mean, it's, it's pretty difficult looking at that interview that he gave to Amar Rajan. But there's also the nature of his story is confusing mm. because it seems to conflict with what so many other people are saying about how long the relationship was, yeah. uh, who else knew about mm. it, whether or not he did or didn't stay overnight in his London apartment, mm. who paid for what. There's so much still that needs clarifying. Yeah. And some of his, what he has said, is in direct contradiction to what other people yeah. who were very close to Eamon Holmes, for example, Holmes, for example yeah. have said. So that then says, well, someone is still not telling the truth. And right. I think everybody, frankly, A, we need the truth. But as you say, look, we, we do need... The, the real person or the real entity here that has messed up in big time is ITV. Yeah. Not ju they've allowed this situation they've, to go they've, on they've, they've for year several, after yeah, year they've, after they've year. They've had several opportunities to, to prevent something like this from happening, and they have taken none of those opportunities. And th there's a real question mark about the quality of the so-called so investigations mm. that they carried out. Right. 
And when everybody is talking about it, for, apparently for years, I think I was probably the last person to know in the nation, frankly. Right. Yeah, right. Because I don't watch daytime TV. Mm. But uh, this, uh, you know, how ITV have ele- allowed this scandal to go on for so long, uh, who knew what where, mm. is, I think, really important. The almost complete silence from them, apart from one letter to mm. Ofcom. What about actually a letter to their shareholders yeah. explaining uh, what has gone on, uh, right. as a statement to the stock market? What are the non-execs doing right. in terms of challenging the chief exec who's presided over a complete catastrophic mm. performance of this company over yeah. the five years that she's And who is it. now going to be summoned before uh, the Parliamentary Committee on Wednesday, I believe, to, Against specifically, her wishes, apparently. to specifically answer these questions and, and about quite, safeguarding uh, and about what the policies inside ITV actually are. And quite right, too, but yeah. apparently she was originally going to send uh, some, some manager as Underling. opposed to herself. Yeah. Again, a complete failure of leadership. So that's going to be an important day. And meanwhile, this morning is still. To ask, and meanwhile, this answer. morning is still going on. I'm told this morning, as we speak, uh, that they're actually looking into the, the interview. And they're, they're watching it on the show, and you kind of go, "How much more of this rubbish are you going to do? What are, you know? How much has to go wrong before you realise that this show is doomed? That the, the network is doomed if it carries on like this? They don't seem to be able to make any decision right. And of course, it all comes back to this critical word, trust. Yeah. And those who. Who've, who've watched and viewed that programme for many years, you know, many, many people across the country will have lost trust in, in both of them, uh, Phil and Holly. They'll have lost trust in the show. Uh, I suspect that many people will be losing trust in ITV yeah. as a brand. Absolutely. Uh, but it's rather similar to the loss of trust in uh, the people who run our government, mm. politicians in Westminster who say one thing and do another. Yeah. And well, look at the just, situation with Holly Willoughby. I mean, Holly Willoughby, who's sort of painted as this whiter-than-white, angelic figure, you know, who's off in Portugal with her family in an £8 million uh, villa, by the way. Not that that's important, obviously. Um, he's saying on, in this interview with The Sun, uh, I'm deeply, deeply sorry that I lied to you. He's making a, a public apology to Holly Willoughby, right? Now, apparently, he has not heard from her. She has said nothing to him uh, since at least a week ago. They'd stopped speaking to each other before he even left ITV. Now, if you're going to talk about people and their kind of relationships, um, is it right that she's leaving him to sort of stew in his own juice like this? I mean, maybe she's not quite as angelic as she's making out to be. Well, uh, possibly. I, I guess there are just so many people in and around this whole tragedy. Mm. It is like a Shakespearean really tragedy, is. to be honest. Well, I So many it... people feel, feel utterly let down by him mm. and his untruths, his half-truths, his lies, yeah. his fibs. Yeah. And that, uh, yeah, so I think many people are just feeling utterly, utterly uh, abused mm. in placing their faith mm. in someone who is sort of the... Right. The face of, of daytime TV, for heaven's sake. And he is the ultimate narcissist, I suppose you would have to say, because here he is yet again, demanding that people watch him, demanding that people feel sorry for him without actually saying it, and demanding that people see him now as a victim. Do you want me to die? Is the words he, he uses on a BBC interview. And, and of course the answer to that well, is... Well, of course is, nobody wants is, him is, to nobody die. Nobody wants uh, him to die. No. Uh, sadly, in the reality is, everybody uh, at some point eventually passes away, but no one wants him to die. He, but he, he is playing no, but he's like a top, But it's like a toxic relationship now, you yeah. know, where, where somebody says to you, I'm going to kill myself. Yes, and I just... He would have been better, frankly, not doing no. that interview. I mean, it's an incredible interview for The Sun to get, um, but it's a, he's, he's, he's literally sort of turned everything on its head again, and that's kind of what narcissists do. Uh, and then, of course, it, it re-emphasises how ITV have completely failed... They've just lost to, the plot. To, ...to look after the senior people mm. uh, at the front of mm. their organisation, the sort of the, the, the right. frontline people, but they've also failed to look after people, other people in the organisation. Yeah. they failed but at they've got every a whole single history level. But they've got a whole history of that, and here we are again in a situation where we're talking about somebody that might commit suicide as a result of something that they haven't done. Yeah, but it, it, it's amazing. It, 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 it tragically beggars belief, mm. actually, how badly they've handled it. And yet, all the people, the senior people involved in running that organisation are all still there, yeah. saying almost absolutely zero to anybody. I mean, imagine having to go to work at ITV at the moment, uh, I, I, no matter what position you're in. Yeah, it, it, must, be, uh, it, it must be horrendous, frankly, yeah. because you don't know who's, who's covering up what, who's telling the truth... Mm. Uh, who's and you don't know who's going to say what next. No. And that's the other thing that ICV have lost, is control of the story. 
they don't have control of the story, they never did have control of it, and it could be literally going anywhere. Uh, that's right, and that's because they allowed rumours over many years to circulate and to carry on, and they didn't bottom it out yeah. one way or another. Mm. And uh, get to the get to the reality mm. of the situation yeah. and deal with it. Yes, absolutely right. We'll be talking about this story obviously throughout the course of the show, throughout the course of the day. An incredible exclusive interview with Philip Schofield in the Sun.